Hey, this is Mark with The Practical Still. I don't have any whiskey. We're not opening a bottle. We opened the whole distillery. So Dan and I have been here for the last, I don't know, almost a day. Uh, hung out in the distillery. The, the tasting room had some food. Delicious here at Deerhammer in Univista, Colorado. BV, if you're a local. Uh, we even went to the rack house. We got to taste whiskey right from the barrel uh, with straws. I mean, it's been amazing. Um, we're going to do a little more this morning. We're going to make sure you guys get a feel for what uh, Deerhammer Distillery looks and feels like. And uh, hope you like it. But it's a little different than one bottle because we opened a bunch. We even opened some barrels. It was delicious. Cheers. Hey guys, my name is Lenny Eckstein. I'm the founder here at Deerhammer Distillery in Buena Vista, Colorado. Welcome. Give you a little bit of a uh, walkthrough on what we do. Uh, we're a grain to glass craft distillery and situated right behind me is our silo. It's currently filled with corn. This is all corn that we source from Colorado. It's a uh, excellent yellow corn, a food grade corn versus a feed grain corn um, grown down near Cortez, Colorado. And this is the base for our bourbon and our hickory smoked corn whiskey, which we're, uh, we're currently in process of making. As well back here, you'll see our mill room. I'll uh, take you a quick walk into there. Uh, this is where we store all our grain, uh, some, some other stuff, barrels, shop vac. Uh, but we mill everything right here and uh, mill spec mill today about 1300 pounds per batch. And from there, once we mill in, uh, we auger up back into the building and we get ready to mash in So what you'll see right here, this is a, a 20 barrel mash ton slash cereal cooker. Um, you know, we primarily make American single malt and this is designated uh, as a mash ton for American single malt when we have a false bottom in here that allows us to separate the milled malted barley from the liquid for our wash. Uh, but in today's case, we're making bourbon. So uh, while the door is shut, you can't quite see it, but we have the false bottom out and uh, we're about to grain in, stir it all up and uh, basically cook that corn, break down the starch, uh, get the enzymatic activity happening, and convert our four grain bourbon grain bill, which consists of that corn we were talking about, wheat, oats, and roasted barley. Uh, get that all converted from starch to a fermentable sugar. Um, it takes a while. We have to bring it up to a pretty high temp, just below boiling, and then ultimately bring it all the way back down to about 70, 75 Fahrenheit, so it's at a good fermentation temp. Uh, so after a bunch of hours of this, uh, as well, you'll note uh, we've got a few little kegs of our back set that, that contributes for our sour mash, which is a practice that we bring in. Uh, let's talk a little bit about sour mashing. It's an old practice that does a few things. It drops the pH and it also adds what are essentially dead yeast cells and that adds a yeast nutrient for future fermentations. So that's something we're pretty fond of. Uh, it comes from the uh, leftovers from the initial distillation. Uh, so after we uh, chill that mash down to about 70 Fahrenheit. We come over to one of three uh, semi-open top single wall fermenters. Um, we'll fill them at about 650 gallons each and we'll add the yeast and it'll do its thing. It takes about four days complete uh, but the first two days really we're seeing all of the fermentation or the conversion of uh, sugar to alcohol happening and we're sitting at about eight and a half to nine percent alcohol at this point we let it go for an additional two days and that's the that's the point in time where the natural flora in this area um you know some wild yeast but mainly lacto or lactobacillus which is a uh, really beneficial bacteria will settle in take hold and lend a really cool flavor profile to our bourbon uh for the location we're making it in now had that been made uh down the road in salida or anywhere else uh you definitely get a slightly different profile so Four days in the fermenters, and then we're ready to move on to distillation. So as we uh, we shuffle down a bit, Deerhammer is known for traditional pot still distillation. Now, what pot stills are uh, unique for and known for is uh, 
contributing full flavor, very little of what's referred to as reflux. So if you'll notice uh, on the heads of both of these pot stills, there's a shape to them. And as we're boil bringing to boil the uh, distiller's beer or the mash, ethanol has a lower boiling point than water does. So that's the first thing to vaporize. And as those vapors are traveling up, there's a little bit of contact with that head and some of it falls back down. Some of the heavier vapors will drop back in and ultimately make their way up but there's not a whole lot. So we're really getting a lot of the contribution of what came from the grain bill in specific, uh, the yeast profile that's contributing to fermentation. Um, so what they'll do uh, in the first still anyway, we'll fill this with the entirety of the mash, heat it up, that ethanol will volatize, travel across the horizontal line arm through the tube and shell condenser and then uh, into our receiver tank. And this will collect up about 100 gallons of what we call low wines. And that's the first distillate. It's uh, the beginning of what will be one of two distillations. Um, and at that point, we're ready to move on to our spirit still. So this will receive that 100 gallons or sometimes we'll collect a bit more. Uh, we'll charge the still with uh, what this stuff would be about 40% alcohol or 80 proof. And we start the process again. We'll heat the still up with steam. We'll let those vapors travel up the head. Again, very squat head, allows for big full flavors. But what's going to happen here, you'll notice the line arm has a little bit more of a downslope to it. Um, the theory behind that is it allows the vapors to travel even easier to their end point. So even less reflux, you know, you're getting the fullest flavors here. It'll again go through a condenser and be cooled down back into a liquid. And then we'll collect into the spirit safe. Now, um, this is a very important part of the process. This is not just a collection of new make or white dog whiskey, but it, this is where it allows us to uh, differentiate between the early runnings or the heads, the good stuff in the middle, that's the hearts, which will be collected in the center, and then the lower runnings that, you know, have a lot of oils and nice flavors. Those are the tails, and they can be recycled into future batches, but we don't put those in our main cut that'll go into the barrel. Um, and this will yield typically between 50 and 70 gallons of uh, final distillate, in this case, uh, white dog bourbon that's ready to go into our barrels and then be trucked down to our barrel rack house just down the road. Um, barrel wise, uh, as I said, we fill them right here and you've got a couple barrels behind you. Um, our standard profile for our barreling and maturation program, they're 53 gallon heavy toast light char, it's a number two char, new American white oak. Uh, they all come from independent state of cooperage. Uh, they've got a cooperage both in Missouri and Kentucky, and uh, they're pretty phenomenal barrels that seem to really match the flavor profiles in all of our spirits, really. Our bourbon, our single malt, our rye, uh, these things work great for us. And we let that run for about, you know, minimum two years, upwards of three to four years for now, and sometimes longer. And uh, yeah, this is where the magic happens, I suppose. We started with about 1,300 pounds of grain. So yeah, a pretty big diminishment. Uh, it's kind of funny because you think about it like beer, it's a 20, 20 barrel mash ton, you know, that, that fills, you know, 650 to 700 gallons of beer, but then we walk away with one barrel. You know, it's, how many runs? Because that's two fish, it's 53, so you got yeah. one plus well, a little. That's a good question, and I didn't touch on that too much. Our hearts collection that will go into these barrels comes off at about 130 proof, give or take, um, depending on a lot of things. but. Uh, ultimately, we go into the barrel at a slightly lower proof. That does a lot of things. Um, it really avoids some of the sharper flavors that can come at higher proof from extract weird extractions in the wood. Uh, we add water prior to going to the barrel, so we bring that down to 105. So even on the uh, most minimal run, for whatever reasons, if we had a smaller yield, once we bring it down to 105, it's typically enough to fill a full barrel. So it makes for a really interesting batch process and. We can make little tweaks, you know. We recently did uh, an experiment with high oats versus high wheat in our four grain bourbon grain bill. By sticking with a batch process, that lets us see the end result in the barrel all the way through without, you know, the intermingling of other batches. So yeah, it works out pretty well that way. And then once, you'll have to repeat this a little bit because I can't hear you. Oh yeah. But once you do the run, does everything get cleaned or can, as long as you're doing bourbon, can you just keep going? Yeah, for the most part, you can keep going. Not every, I mean, we do clean, but not everything has to be cleaned between batches. Um, you know, we'll do a citric acid wash of the spirit still, and, and the stripping still for that matter, but more often than the spirit still, every, uh, you know, every month or so, 
Um, it's not that critical to keep it shining. In some places, kind of think that you'll get, you'll start to preserve your house flavor more so by letting it roll. Uh, there's really, you know, uh, the single malt process is a slightly cleaner process because we're taking the grain out. Whereas we do get some caking of, uh, you know, the grain from the mash around the still, but that can be hosed off. So they are hosed off every time, but it's not a complete scrub down. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely, we've sized this, this, I should say, I sized this distillery for my five foot, six inch stature on a good day. Uh, everything would skim the button of my cab when I was walking. And uh, as we hired folks that were a few just taller than me, we had to make some adjustments. So, you know, I fit fine in these stills. Uh, we're always a little careful about the size of who we hire. Yeah. So I'm not getting the job. Ah, you might be able to sneak in. It's, it's not, you know, I think you'd be able to, you, you get some muscle memory going and you make the ducking points where you got to make them. <laughs>